All right, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this edition, where I've got a brand new 2022 Chevy Bolt EV. I'm going to apologize for some of the background noise. My usual spot here is kind of busy today with a lot of landscaping and some construction going on, but I'll get through it. It's going to be a shorter review because I've already kind of done a review of the 2020 Bolt. Uh, which I did last year, so please go back and watch that episode. I uh, I'll put the number of that episode in the show notes so you can go back and look at it. Because not a whole lot has changed, but enough has changed for the 2022 model year, as you can see. So first I want to thank GM Canada for letting me um, this vehicle for the week, and let me get right into my quick review. Now, GM Chevrolet does tout the Bolt as, especially the 2022, as Canada's most affordable long-range EV, all-electric EV, even more important. And you know, to be honest, folks, they're really not far from the mark. With a range pushing over 400 kilometers easily on the Bolt, especially with these nice temperatures and a decent fast charging and very good efficiency, which I've noticed. Um, and I don't remember what I got on the last review as far as efficiency, but this one's doing quite well. I would agree with GM's claims that this is a very affordable, and that's going to be the theme of this quick review is, you know, similar to the ID4 where I talked about total value and practicality, well, this has it too. The Bolt is full of practicality at a pretty decent value when you look at EV pricing. So moving beyond practicality, the main things uh, that have changed for the 2022 model year, obviously the most striking is the visual, is the ex exterior, which is a new body style. Um, it's much more designed with minimalistic, yet very much more aerodynamic and modern cues to it. Um, I like the design. I think it looks really good. And of course, the b b bigger brother to this, the Bolt EUV, which I'll have in a couple of weeks to test, is a very similar design. They both have the same design language here. I like that um, GM has gone for LED headlights all the way around, or LED lights all the way around with high intensity LEDs for the front. Makes it look much nicer, much more futuristic, and you know blends in with a lot of the modern styles that we're seeing today. So the fascia is different, the rear lights are different as well, the turn signals are still in the bumper, um, as you can see by the B-roll, yet they're different. You know, you don't have the, the and the, the backup light is in the middle bumper. So it's just a different arrangement and a much nicer, much more visible in my opinion. Now I want to just quickly add, you know, the Bolt has been a very popular EV. Of course, not as popular as some others in the world, but certainly GM is proud to, you know, to say that they've sold well over 100,000 units globally since 2016, since the debut of the Bolt. And that's pretty good for, a, you know, an OEM, a large vendor that was ramping up in production uh, on their first, you know, all electric uh, vehicle, which I thought was pretty good. And of course, GM, this is part of GM strategy, the new Bolt to have 30 EVs by 2025, because they are very much uh, moving forward on, on that. Now I'm going to show you the interior in a sec, but it is, it is also a new design, and that was something that was kind of criticized for some folks on the interior. You know, different colors and a little bit cheap looking in some cases, different depending on the trim. And also those seats, you know, there were a lot of people that complained about the comfort level of the front seats. Well, these are all new seats and an all new interior design with a new instrument panel, vehicle controls, as well as all these other accents which they add. They've also changed the center console. They've gotten away from the shifter into push and pull buttons. And it's very easy and intuitive to use. And it actually looks a little bit better. It opens up that center console. And I really like what they've done with it. I am going to walk through a little bit on the uh, display, as I mentioned. But it does have an infotainment system 3, which is new. It's a 10.2 diagonal color touchscreen, and it's very snappy and very responsive. I've had no issues in the few days that I've been driving this with any sort of software glitches or snags. It's been responsive and snappy, um, and that's really what I would expect from GM on this. And of course, it still has the one pedal driving, which it did from the previous model years, and it is very intuitive. Um, I don't know, uh, they do say that it's new, um, what's new about it is the button. There's a button as opposed to putting the gear selector in low or finding the one pedal drive there. And it's a much easier, it tells you when it's on and you notice and it actually works quite well. I started using it right away and was able to um, get pretty good efficiency and not use the brakes too much. The brake lights come on when, when you're slowing down with regen and all that. So it's a very nice feature. Now, from an EV perspective and an all-electric perspective, not much has changed. This is still a 65 kilowatt-hour battery pack. 
um, mated to a powertrain that puts out about 200 horsepower and uh, which is 150 kilowatts of power and 266 uh, pound-feet of torque. Uh, very similar, I think it's exactly the same specs and powertrain, quote-unquote drivetrain, that's used in the previous model, so nothing's changed there. What has changed is a little bit that they've tweaked, both the batteries a little bit. Um, these are different batteries, these are different makeup batteries. They're similar to the 2020, but they are different than the 2017 or 2016s to the 2019s. And I know some people are gonna comment about the recall status that's going on with the bolts. The 2020s and up are not impacted at all by that recall status. And I wanna put that quickly into perspective. There's over, I believe, about 70,000 bolts in the US and Canada. And you know, people are talking about these fires that have happened. There have been uh, nine, I believe nine reported fires to GM out of that 70, almost 70,000 of, of units that are out there in North America. So put that into perspective. What GM is talking about right now is advising clients that uh, have models that are impacted by this, you know, parking it outside, not charging overnight, this stuff. I know it's an inconvenience, but they're doing it, you know, there's lawyers involved, so they want to be overcautious and, you know, overabundance of caution that they're, they're putting here as they continue to work out the fix. But I wanted to point out that the battery packs in the 2020 and up model years, including this 2022, are have a different makeup. I don't know what that means. I understand, I asked a question with GM yesterday when I was on the phone, if they are using SKI uh, uh, for uh, battery packs as well, and they said they're not, they don't have an agreement, but I do remember reading something that they had inked an agreement earlier. Uh, but they do say that they're using still LG Chem or now the LG uh, Energy Division, I believe that what it's called now, uh, for their batteries. But there is a bit, a bit of a different makeup, and I believe they're utilizing some different construction techniques in putting the cells together to alleviate the, some of the issues they had previously. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that with regards to the 2022 model year. Okay, as I mentioned, DC fast charging or charging in general, what they have changed in the 2022 model year is they fat, they've increased level two charging. So now supports up to 11.5 kilowatts of level two, which means that you'll be able to charge this well within about a six to seven to eight hour time frame, depending on the state of charge when you plug that in. And that's up from 7.2 for the previous model year. Also new is the DC fast charging. Now it's slightly increased. Um, they didn't give me a firm number. They told me what the amperage was, and we know that this is a 400 volt architecture. So I was able to do the math and get that confirmed by GM that we are pushing about 60 kilowatts of fast charging, which is up from about 55 in the 2021 model year. So this is slightly faster from a fast charging. And if you look at this quick video that I'm playing now, this is when uh, I maxed regen the vehicle. So I just slowed down really quick and you can see that it tops out, it hits about 59 on that regen. And that's a way that uh, indicator that you can see how much is coming in. So it definitely, it looks like it supports at least up to 60. So, you know, those are good, decent charging specs. And again, because of the size of the battery pack and the EP range and the efficiency, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, this is a very good practical all around um, all electric vehicle if it fits for your lifestyle. So I'm very, very um, pleased what GM has done for this. And the other thing that's new for this model year is that GM has now included their, their primary safety assist package, but those safety features include automatic emergency braking, front, front pedestrian braking, lane keep assist, which I'll talk about and I'll show you a quick video uh, as I'm driving with the lane keep assist and lane departure warnings, a uh, following distance indicator, forward collision alert, and intelligent beam auto headlights or auto high beam headlights. Um, now, one thing I did want to comment and I don't have video on it, but the um, back assist. So when you're backing up, the camera comes on and there is a blind spot monitoring and of course, and a, and a backup assist to look for the, if a car vehicle's coming when you're backing up. And it works really, really well. In fact, I was backing up out of my driveway and there was a car probably about 30 feet away still, not even in my mirrors. And it beeped at me with a direction arrow saying, hey, this is where something's coming from. And it worked flawlessly. It did that a couple times in a parking lot as well. That system is really good. It's actually better than my Model 3 Tesla for backing up, I'll have to tell you that. It doesn't warn you that early. This warns you really early. So, you know, thumbs up to GM for that feature. 
And before I talk about and show you the interior and talk about some of the features, it does have the regen on demand as well with the paddle. Um, I really didn't use that because I'm in one pedal driving mode. I found that to be very sufficient. Again, feathering that accelerator uh, to find you know, the amount of regen that you want. It takes a little bit of practice early on, but I picked it up quite fast and it works extremely well. So you know, after the first day, I've been basically running on this on one pedal all the time. It's actually a little bit better than the Nissan Leaf that I had, and that was a pretty decent system. So as you can see, it's got a pretty nice interior. Now cargo space is virtually the same as it was before. There's really no differences there. Um, we're looking at up to 1,614 liters of total cargo space with the rear seats folded. So it's okay. I was able to get all my stuff for filming and I had tons of room more. So you put one of the seats down or, or both seats down, you can get quite a lot of stuff in there. Now, additionally, one thing I do like about the new design is the, the buttons on the steering wheel. The last model years were this kind of rubber surface material um, that was kind of coated. And, uh, you know, I found the, tac the tactile and the have the feedback not that good for my personal benefit. But these are your standard buttons that you push, that you, uh, um, you know, your scroll wheels that you go up and down and push to get different menus, right and left, all that kind of stuff for, for cruise control, all that stuff. It's a very easy, intuitive um, uh, steering wheel to use and I love the flat bottom design. It's a nice comfortable grip uh, leather wrapped or, or full leather wrapped uh, But everything else, you know is very similar to the old model year uh, bolt So here's the front binnacle really not much change. Um, they give you two options for visibility, but it's pretty well the same I just wanted to point out, you know, I've done um, 181 kilometers still have about uh, just under 300 left so that puts me well over 450 kilometers a range closer to 480 or so if I just do the math you can see my efficiency is really good at 13.2, and that's just average driving, um, and it gives you your power ratings and all that kind of stuff. So it's a nice display. You can change it to another one, but there's really only two. This one's, this one's probably the best one for information. So on the screen here, hopefully this is coming out because it's a fairly bright day, but it's a very nice screen, very responsive, as you can see. Um, it's got all the features that you have now. It, the the, the Bolt EV does not come with built-in nav. The EUV does have that as an option. So if you want navigation, you need to actually mate it with your iPhone or your Android, uh, your CarPlay or your Android Auto to use the, the map features and the, the routing features that are in there. But it does have you know pretty good screen for energy, gives you lots of different stats. Uh, about the energy. Uh, I reset this and so far I'm averaging about, or the lifetime on this is 16.1 kilowatt hours per 100 or 161 um, per uh, kilometer. Uh, this has just over 1,500, 1,500 kilometers, so it's a relatively new vehicle. But you can get a lot of good different impacts and how your driving is and all that kind of stuff based on temperature and how you're averaging. And I'm trying to stay in the green, as you can see, pretty well um, in efficiency, but I'm just driving average. And then you get the battery flow thing, which I don't think is really useful anymore. You can set charging options here as far as your levels go and your timing and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can put uh, times uh, to stop, start and stop and all that good stuff and you can change the level. I'm leaving it at 100 because this is a press vehicle and other people are going to want to use this and want to be able to fully charge it. But normally I would probably keep it at about 90, 85 to 90 like I do for my Model 3. So other than that, it's got you know some good features, some apps. There is the My Chevrolet app, which links up and lets you locate it, honk the horn, uh, all that kind of stuff, precondition, things like that. Um, you know, it's it's an okay app. I don't think it's anything uh, award-winning, but it does the job what it what it says. Pretty decent audio system. You know, I had it cranked up pretty good. Um, there is a Wi-Fi hotspot capability, as GM has, with built-in 4G LTE, of course. Um, and it's just an all-around good package. The climate controls are nice and easy. I like the way they've designed those. Easy push buttons with toggles to uh, use fan controls and things like that. Uh, I think it's a great, great feature. Now, I'm mentioning about the seating position and how this changed. You know, the seats are much different. And they are power, um, all for the drivers, and it's a manual. This is, I believe, an eight-way power, and it's a six-way manual for the passenger. But one feature they have is, hopefully you, this will come out of camera, is that you can raise and lower the seat bottom here. And it, it is a bit of a, a tilt, but as you can see, the seat bottom goes up. See, so, yeah, it goes up about, you know, it's a couple of inches, and then you can lower that seat bottom here um, pretty well down again to a, a couple of inches. 
that made a big difference. That height difference for people of smaller stature, uh, you know, like my wife, it really made a big difference. It's a small thing. That in, in combination with the flat, uh, flat bottom steering wheel just made that ergonomics and comfort level that much better. Of course, it's still telescoping and, uh, and tilt, of course, on the steering wheel. So there's, there's lots of ways with really good lumbar support. And these seats are very comfortable. I've been driving around all week been great. We're going to go on a bit of a, a longer trip tomorrow, just uh, booting around the GTA. Got some errands to run, so you know I'll get more more kilometers out of it. But it's been very comfortable, and you know it's a little thing, but it does make a big difference. So let me take you for a quick drive, and I'll talk about some of my driving impressions, but very very quickly. So my overall driving impressions of the Bolt hasn't changed. Um, if you watch the last video, I was quite pleased with the Bolt with the suspension. Um, you know, it's a nice comfortable ride, certainly not a sports car. It is, seems to be a little top heavy, but even though EVs are planted with that low center of gravity, a little bit of wind does knock it a little bit. Um, I guess just because of the height of it, because it is a nice easy vehicle to get in and out of. Otherwise it's fairly quiet. It's a, we got some good wind gusts today, as you see, and it's handling it quite well. So overall, you know, this is a very pleasant experience. I've been driving around for a few days. It's comfortable. All the controls, I, I like the new outline of the dashboard. Everything is even easier to get to. Uh, nicer colors, a little bit more toned down, not kind of in your face that I'm an EV. Very pleasant, a nice, everything, all the controls are nice and easy to reach. Everything here on the console is good with storage and everything. So, you know, my driving impressions, again, it's very positive on this vehicle. I think it's a great vehicle for anybody that's looking to get into a longer range all electric vehicle at a very good price point. Um, certainly highly recommend the Bolt EV as a choice. Okay, so I just put the lane keeping on and it's on, uh, hopefully you can see, got the cruise and the lane keeping is on. So this is again, a lane keeping assist. So it cruises on 60 and as you can see, it starts veering. Um, it, the wheel does turn a bit, but then it rides and it does its thing. It starts beeping at you and goes back to the middle. There's a bit of a wind gust today, so it's a little windy. Um, but as you can see, it's drifting right again, and it's beeping at me and says, take the steering wheel, all that stuff. So it's very similar to what it was before. So, um, you know, I don't think, um, again, it's not a full lane keeping. It's more of just a slight assist. It is something that um, I wouldn't probably use at any point in time. The cruise control on this, so there is no adaptive cruise. It's just regular cruise control on this uh, on this particular trim model. I know in the US you can get adaptive cruise, but not on this one. So anyway, that's the lane keeping on the 2022. Pretty well the same as the last one. Well, I hope you liked some of that summary of the driving impressions and some of the features there. Um, you know, I want to talk about pricing because that's, I think, where the bolt shines. When you look at what's available here in Canada, and I'll, I'll lump the US into that since we basically share a lot of the same model lines with the exception of a few states. It's a very well-priced vehicle. I think GM's come out with a very attractive price point on this. I bet I think it's a bit lower than what the 2021 model year came out at. Again, they got rid of one of the trim models, so the Bolt EV starts at 38,198 as an MSRP, which by EV standards is a very good price. Of course, I'd always like to see the pricing lower, but it is what it is, folks. It does qualify for the $5,000 federal incentive, and it will qualify for all the provinces in Canada that are offering provincial incentives as well, and you can stack them so you can get a lot more money off. So in, you know, in provinces like Quebec and BC, you can get out the door pretty, you know, under, well under $40,000 with this vehicle, which is very well equipped. In here in Ontario, I priced it out with tax and the $5,000 uh, incentive, uh, all that stuff with nothing down. You're at about 40, uh, I believe about 43, $44,000 out the door, which is pretty good pricing for a longer range e, you know, uh, EV that has thermal cooling, that has a pretty solid electrical uh, electric architecture, a very nice driving manners, good performance, again, zero to 60 in about seven seconds or so, which is more than adequate. I had no problem getting up to speed and I've been running it in normal mode, not in sport mode for the entire week. A pretty good efficient vehicle. You know, again, I have a friend who's been, has these one of these for a few years. I think he got one of the first ones in Ontario. 
um, in 2017. He's an Uber, been Ubering with it. He's got tons of kilometers on it. Hasn't had any issues at all. It's been a fantastic car and he runs this thing all year and he just loves it. So these are very durable, practical cars, especially for that price point and what you get. There's a nice warranty to back it up. And of course, you've got a large GM dealer net network across Canada and the US to help support you should you have issues. So in conclusion, I think the, the GM, the 2022 Chevy Bolt EV is a great vehicle. I really have enjoyed my few days with it. You know, what GM has done to open this up to even more potential owners, I think they've done a great job from a value proposition. Would I recommend this? 120%, absolutely I would. As a good uh, vehicle, um, a great vehicle really for all around practicality at a very good price point when you look at the scale of EVs, especially all electrics that are available here in Canada. Um, I think that this is money well spent on the Bolt EV. Now, um, uh, as I mentioned, you know, there are, nothing's perfect. There are a little bit of cons in this, you know, as far as. So one of the negatives that I found with the Bolt EV, and it was similar to the old one, is just that rear room getting in and out because you've got this sloping hood line and I'm not super tall. I'm only about five, six, but you know, as you can see, when I get in, I really have to focus on lo lowering my head underneath this, uh, uh, this roof pillar here. Otherwise I'm going to bonk it. So you kind of have to go under once you're in, you know, I've got about a fistful of headroom on here. So it's, it's okay once you're in, but it's just getting in under this roof line. Uh, that I think, you know, I wish GM kind of would have, you know, sliced it a little bit straighter and then maybe, you know, arced it down a little bit quicker there just to give it a bit more entrance room. It works for a lot of people. It's just something that you have to be cognizant of. And of course, I've got lots of leg room here. I've got the seat where I use it. So it's pretty comfortable cabin. Would I want to sit back here for 12 hours? Probably not. But for a few hours, Very absolutely. Vehicle. And my hat's off to GM for not changing anything that actually worked quite well from a practicality and from a price point, but enhancing it enough to really bring it up to, I think, to more modern standards as far as design and functionality goes and incorporating a lot of the features that you would have to pay extra for before into this one and only model available here in Canada. I know in the US, I think you can get a couple different trims still in the 2022 model year, but here it's only one trim. So I think GM's done a good job in bringing the price down, adding additional value and features, giving a new design, upping the comfort level and the drivability in this machine and offering that to a consumer market that's really starting to look at EVs now as we move the chains. So good job GM and I think you know this is a very strong vehicle if you're interested in looking at an EV. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution show where I give you my thoughts about the 2022 Bolt EV. Thanks again for GM Canada for letting me use of the vehicle and thank you for watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Would very much appreciate it. I always welcome comments, so please let me know uh, what you think of this. And if you are a previous Bolt, Bolt owner, I'd love to hear from you as well because the, the people that have reached out to me really, really enjoy this vehicle. For that, of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, I'm always humbled by that. Thank you very much for your support and uh, means a lot to me. If you're interested, you can check the link below and look out and uh, look at that. Of course, keep watching what's going on in the EV landscape, all kinds of things. Reach out to me by my contact information that's coming up at the end of the show. If you have questions, you want to, uh, want some help in, in looking at an EV, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and I've given them some guidance. Um, again, I'm, I'm not uh, trying to push one particular model or one particular vendor here. I'm open to everybody that's out there and I try to help consumers find something that could fit their lifestyle and use case as we navigate through the EV revolution. So thanks again for watching. Please, everybody stay safe. Until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.